Hello, my name is Ryan. Today we're going to be looking at what kills a brushless motor. Current or voltage? Now, motor destruction is something that is not all that common, or at least I hope it is not. However, for some of us, we may actually end up seeing this happen. Today we're going to be digging into the reasons why this may happen. Now, one of the things that I do want to point out is that we're going to be looking specifically at destruction of the motor from an electrical point of view. We're not going to be looking at it from a mechanical point of view. I'll give you a very quick example of that very shortly here. Let's first talk about the voltage. Now, one of the biggest parameters of radio control brushless motors is the KV value. This KV value is very helpful for us. We are able to take that value, multiply it by the voltage we plan to send to the motor, and we get an output of RPM from that. Now, of course, if we take our RPM value and we want to increase it, all we need to do is increase the voltage. This is something that we control. Our motor's KV value is fixed. We go ahead and increase the voltage of that brushless motor, and we then get an output of RPM that is going to be higher, increased. So if we look at the motor RPM, yes, we can actually see destruction of the motor based on uh, the mechanical side of things if we go and spin this up too much. Now every motor is going to have a maximum rotational speed that we must be aware of. That maximum rotational speed is going to either be based on bearings or the rotor. Bearings can fail if you over rev the bearings. You'll end up, you know, spinning them apart. And same with the rotor within the brushless motor. Now the rotor's responsibility is to hold in those magnets. If you rotate that rotor too quickly you can actually throw those magnets out and that can lead to some pretty significant damage inside of a brushless motor. So that's looking at the RPM side of things. Now let's ignore RPM and let's say we can increase the voltage without affecting the RPM and damage that can be caused. If we take a brushless motor's wire it's going to have insulation that surrounds it. Now one of the things that is critical is that we don't actually exceed the specification of the insulation. Now one of the things that will happen if you end up doing that is the voltage will actually jump the gap from one wire to another wire right through the insulation. This is exactly why all of the wires that we have today have very specific voltage parameters, very specific voltage ratings. This is going to prevent that if as long as our motor wire is rated to a certain degree we will not have the voltage jump outside of that wire through into something else. Now luckily for us in our radio control applications we have a very well defined domain. We only typically see about a 1 cell lithium polymer battery pack used upwards of a 12 cell lithium polymer battery pack and this is going to be less than 50 volts nominally. Now this also means for us that we won't really see this voltage thing come into play. Voltage does not actually kill our brushless motor. We can increase the voltage of our brushless motor and the wires and everything will be able to handle this. Now one of the things that we have to also consider is current. So let's take a look at the current. Now current, as we end up loading our motor, is going to increase. As the load of the motor increases, so does current. One of the biggest things that we see out of these electric motors is waste heat. Now waste heat is the product of energy that is being consumed by whatever you're running and in this case it's a motor and it's what the motor doesn't actually put forth to mechanical power. It comes out as heat that is generated by the motor not being 100% efficient. Now one of the ways that you can actually calculate this efficiency is based on resistance of the motor and the square of the current. So that is the current multiplied by current multiplied by the resistance. Now the current value, you can of course measure this by data logging the run that we make with that brushless motor. Now many ESCs that are available on the market today can actually record this information for us. It'll data log the current and then we're able to take that and see exactly what our motor is running at. Now for resistance, the motor manufacturer will have this specification available to you. If you can't find this parameter, you can also measure it. Now there's a very specific way that you're able to measure it that you can find on the Radio Control Info website. With these two parameters, we can then determine the amount of waste heat that is generated. The square of the current multiplied by the resistance gives us the value very specific to waste heat. 
Now the waste heat is of course heat that is generated by the motor. That heat must get expelled or dissipated through the motor. The only real way to expel or get rid of that heat is to either transfer it off to another component or transfer that heat off to the air. Now if your motor is not doing a very good job of it or is simply is getting overwhelmed by the heat being produced, you can have a couple things happen. Now one of the things that you can happen have happened within your brushless motor is the actual demagnetization of the magnets. So your rotor has and contains those magnets. Enough heat will actually destroy those magnets by demagnetizing them. That's why brushless motors have a threshold of heat. You do not want to exceed that heat region. Now if you end up doing so and you exceed that threshold, you'll have demagnetization occur within those magnets and what will be the result is a weaker magnet produces a higher KV. And this is kind of like a cyclic thing. So as you have a higher KV, now your motor is trying to spin faster, but it has the same load, so it can't spin it faster without drawing more power. More power means you get more heat and then more heat means you further demagnetize that magnet to the point where your magnet has essentially zero magnetic uh, force that it can actually apply. In this case, you don't have a motor. You just have a big uh, heater. And once that happens, your electrical windings that exist in the stator will begin to melt, will begin to burn away. The electrical windings has an enamel coating on it, and that is designed to make sure that the power doesn't get transferred from one winding to another. And once this happens, your motor is essentially toast. This is what is known as permanent damage within the motor. You will not be able to use this motor again. Um, and if you do try, you're gonna just be putting your battery and your speed control in harm's way. So this is exactly how a brushless motor fails, you know, with the current side of things. You know, some of you may say, well, wait, voltage actually made my motor fail. I tried increasing the voltage and my motor was destroyed. Well. There's something that you do have to pay attention here. So as we increase the voltage, we are expecting more power out of our motor. As we increase the RPM that that motor needs to deliver, we're going to also be increasing the load if we don't do anything about the load. So in other words, if you have a radio control car and you increase the voltage of that system and then you don't do anything about your gearing, you are expecting that motor to turn that exact same load at a higher RPM in order to make that car go faster. That's probably what your goal is, but what's actually happening is the voltage is gonna get you that additional RPM. However, the load is going to increase because now you need to go faster and that is going to be contributing to the current side of things. So current is also going to increase. So what actually destroys your motor is the current of that brushless motor system. You're gonna have higher currents, which is gonna to lead to increased amounts of heat, ultimately leading to destruction of your power system. You know, in this case, we're talking about brushless motors. One way that you could avoid this is by actually changing your gearing so you reduce the amount of load that you have on your brushless motor. If you increase the voltage, if you're trying to get efficiency or slight bump in power, you want to make sure you change your gearing. A jump in voltage and then you drop your gearing a little bit and you'll come to a nice compromise. Once you do that, you'll want to go and measure the temperatures that your motors are, are getting to. And then once you can confirm that your motor is operating within specification, you have a safe, reliable setup. So really when you look at it, voltage does not actually destroy the motor. Current destroys the motor, and the only reason why current destroys the motor is because you get this sort of waste heat development. And the waste heat is going to come from your formula where you're looking at the square of the current multiplied by the resistance gives you the value of heat that is going to be generated. This heat can burn away the windings within your brushless motor, and it can also demagnetize the motor's rotor, the magnets in there. Both of those things are very bad. Once you start demagnetizing the motor, that's going to you know, lead to destruction of that motor. As soon as you start demagnetizing it, I would consider the motor dead. So there you have it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.